today for this very important day. It warms the heart of veterans to look out and see how many people came to give the respect, honor, and dignity to our veterans and our fallen veterans. Though they can only be here in spirit, they deserve no less. They will never be forgotten. Service members we honor here today come from all walks of life. They shared several traits. They all had pride, courage, selflessness, determination, dedication, and integrity. They all understood the need <clears throat> to serve a cause larger than oneself. We all know things that we so enjoy in our daily lives that were made possible by the sacrifices of our military. Some didn't want to go and fight in a foreign land, but they understood our country needed them. Our freedom was at stake, our constitution was being threatened, our way of life was being threatened, our Marines, Navy, Air Force, Army was called to defend our country, and they all gave 110% and accomplished the mission at hand. Our military today is the best fighting force any nation has ever seen. Our Memorial Day began as an informal day that led to the first formal day, formal, formal Memorial Day op observance in Waterloo, New York on May 5th, 1886. And in 1887, Congress made it an official federal holiday and I'll, I'll conclude uh, with this. We will never quit honoring our troops and the ones that gave their ultimate. At this time, we will present the colors. Marion County Veterans Honor Guard and Marion County High School Junior ROTC. I'll stand, please. Government. Permission granted. Right. Face. Come left. At this time, we will ask our chaplain, Lewis Flanagan, to give us our invocation. <laughs> Let's bow our heads <clears throat> in a moment of prayer and petition. We all want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful day and this opportunity to honor our fallen comrades we fought the good fight and paid the ultimate price. We want to ask you, Heavenly Father, to guide our Commander-in-Chief of our military today to make right decisions and to guide our armed forces 
so that we can still always ab 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 obtain peace and tranquility in our wonderful nation. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. At this time, I would I would like to uh, introduce our dignitaries. We have with us today Judge Darty, and we have uh, Jimmy Higdon, State Senator, Brandon Reed, State Rep, Jerry Crenshaw, Landon Mayor. We want to. Thank each and every one of them for being here. <laughs> At this time, we'll have a uh, uh, music interlude from our Marion County High School Band. They, they will uh, provide us with a couple of patriotic songs. Thank you for that beautiful music. Our guest speaker today is Command Sergeant Major Joseph Brockman. In a minute, I, I will call him to the podium, and if you will read his bio on the back of your program, it's about the uh, most impressive bio that uh, I've ever seen, I believe. There, there's hardly anything uh, that this uh, comrade has not done. I'll just, I'll just read uh, one line of it. Command Sergeant <clears throat> Major Brockman entered the Army in September 73, 1973, and in, uh, attended the basic training at Fort Knox. He held, has held every infantry leadership position from team, team leader to battalion commander, Sergeant Major. And the rest of that is, it, like I said, it's a very impressive uh, bio, so if you all would, um, you can read that. And at this time, I will ask Command Sergeant Major Joseph Brotman to come up, and uh, he will be speaking to you people today. I'm glad he prefaced that with 1973 and not 1873. It uh, seemed like a long time ago when you think about it, uh, Senator Higdon 
tried to put me, throw me under the bus a few minutes ago when we went over to the band. And uh, he said, if you ever wonder how old uh, Marion County High School is, just look at the Sergeant Major. They'll tell you how old it is. And what they don't realize, and I had to tell them over there, Senator Higdon and I banged heads more than one time. So I can honestly say that I have tussled with the senator from the state of Kentucky. Didn't, not qualifying what, what year or wherever that was, but we have done that in the past. And it was uh, under Coach Tommy Simpson made us uh, a little bit better men at that day. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow warriors, it's an honor to be here with you today. I promise I won't talk very long. Uh, and I know it's Sunday, so I'm not going to pass the plate. Just It's all going to be good. We're not going to be here very long, I promise. But we're going to have some things I want to tell you that are near and dear to my heart. It takes me, I live in Clarksville, Tennessee. It takes me about two and a half hours to drive up here from, uh, from Clarksville. Retired there from the 101st. Uh, born and raised here. Retired there. Came back for, for, the, for today's ceremonies. And I was driving by. As I was coming back, I passed a lot of boats and a lot of campers. A lot of barbecue grills. Heard on the on the radio Memorial Day specials. Buy one, get one free. But wait, if you order now for nineteen ninety nine, you get two more. All right. <laughs> Talking about three day weekends, first official weekend of the summer. Opening my swimming pool. Uh, and then I got to thinking, do all those people that I pass understand where that came from? It can't be a holiday that we don't forget. Are they, do we, do, I, I hope that they would, they would pause at some point in time this weekend and just reflect on why they get to do the things that they're doing. They're, what we're doing here today has a cost to it. And there's not a dollar sign that you can put on it. It's a self-sacrifice cost. It's a personal cost. I grew up in a small town. I grew up in Springfield. Uh, Grew up on a farm out there. My grandmother helped raise me. My mom and dad and my whole family moved in with my grandmother when my grandfather passed away. And we got to, didn't, we, I was just a young guy then. I was just a little bit of thing. But I got to, I had the opportunity to grow up in a gold star family. I did not understand what that was until I got a little older. My grandmother sent two of her sons to World War II. But only one of those sons came home. I had an uncle that was killed on the island of Luzon in World War II. He was with the 1st Cav Division. He grew up around horses, so I guess that was the place he was supposed to be. He grew up around those horses. He was in the 1st Cav Division. He was killed by an enemy Japanese sniper on the island of Luzon. Awarded the Silver Star. If you don't understand... The, the thing about the stars, hopefully somebody's taught you. If you see a blue star hanging in a window, a blue star license plate, that means somebody in the family is serving, is, is in harm's way. If you see a gold star, somebody in that family has paid the ultimate price. Somebody in that family has given the hit, his or her all to accomplish that task. That's the sacrifice. That's the cost we made. All across this country, Today and tomorrow, people are going to gather to do what we're doing right here. They'll gather in town squares, churches, BFW halls, American Legion halls, schools, and in some places, national cemeteries. To honor those who have paid the price for us to be here. The names of those soldiers are etched in stone on monuments in cities, large and small. And they're etched on the headstones that you see to your left and to your right, to your front and to your rear. They're all around us. But have you ever stopped to consider the design and what these stones don't say? Think about this for a second. As you look across, and if you, it's okay to look. There's no way for me standing here that I can look at any of these stones and tell you what race they are what color they are, what gender they are, how much money they had, how much money they didn't have. I can't tell you what war they served in. I can't tell you what day they died. Not from here. I got a little bit closer for that when I do that. There is not one stone here better than the other. 
The stones are all the same. They're perfectly aligned. If you look left, right, if you look at them, but it amazes me about cemetery, the national cemeteries, no matter which you look, all these soldiers are standing in formations, dressed right and covered down. That's the way they're supposed to be. No one better than the other. No one stands out above the other. I have an uncle who has a stone out here. I have an uncle that I was telling you about. His stone's not here. His stone's in the family plot in Washington County. But it's just like that one. And it's just like that one. The only thing different is the name that's on it. That's all, it's, that's all that matters. Here's something else I want you to think about when you think about these people. When you think about the soldiers and the veterans and the, and the, and the, the ones that have gone off before while we're here. All of them are going to be the same age. They're never going to get older. They're not going to get any older. That's, that's what we get to do. We get to get old. And we get to be feeble. We get to do all those things that they don't get the chance to do. If I ask my mother, when I, if I were to ask her right now to remember her brother, she's going to remember him the way he was when he left. Not the way he would be if he was 87, 88 years old right now. Anybody who's lost a loved one is the same way. No matter how old they are when they, when, when they go, that's how you're going to remember them. That's how we're going to remember these people here. We have to remember, we have to do everything within our power to make sure that we never let this holiday, this special day, become a thing of the past. We have to teach our students, we have to teach our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, we have to teach them that taking a knee is not an option. We stand up when we hear the national anthem. I'm not, I'm not gonna get political, I'll save that for another speech, but that's something that most of us, if you've worn this uniform and if you've stood in harm's way, or even if you haven't stood in harm's way, if you've prepared yourself to stand in harm's way, that means something to you. The Army Band's version of the National Anthem, instrumental, takes one minute and 47 seconds from first note to last. That's all it takes. And for us to ask someone to stand up and put your hand on your heart for a minute and 47 seconds, what cost is that compared to this cost? They, don't, they, they pale in comparison. I'm asking you to stand up. That's all I want you to do. You live in the greatest country in the world. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what you see on the TV. I don't care about any news this, news that. It's still the greatest country on the face of the earth. And I'm proud to be part of it. I'll tell you a couple of stories. I'm wrapping up, I promise. But I get, I get excited. I, I, I tried to preach one time. <laughs> and I wasn't real good at that. I mean, I'm a believer. Don't get me wrong. I believe. I believe. All right? But I'm a little bit better at this than I was at preaching, so I'm going to hang on to what I got. A couple of stories here. I'm wrapping up, I promise. I talked to my kids at school. I'm a junior ROTC instructor. I have a, a battalion just like the, the one they have out here at Marion County. And I get kids that come in late, especially during harvest time. They'll come late to school. I say, what happened to you? Why are you late? Oh, I got behind some farmer in a combine. And the line was so long I couldn't get around him. I said, would you stop and thank him when you went by? They said, what for? I said, did you eat breakfast? Well, yeah. I said, how do you think he got there? How do you think he got there? I tell you that, and I know it's a farming community. Some of you guys can relate to that. But my, the other story I want to tell you is the church I used to go to in Clarksville. I still go to church, different church. The church I used to go to is right off the, the boundary of Fort Campbell. And Fort Campbell, if you ever seen a, if you ever seen an infantry battalion fly through the air at night, there's a few helicopters that are out there making a little bit of noise. I mean, it's in the dead, and we don't. You know, we practice to do things at night. We don't practice to do this stuff in the daytime. Anybody can do it in the daytime, okay? You got to be able. If you're if you're really bad, you can do it at night. So we come in there, and we hook up everything we own, we put everybody we could in a helicopter, and we fly around, and we make a whole bunch of noise. Oh, that's something. If you've never done it, oh, it's something. Oh, it's something you ought to try to do. But anyway. I'd go to church on Sunday, a week or so later, and one of them 
one of them uh, people would come up to me, somebody would come up to me, said, you guys kept me awake the other night. Them helicopters flying all over my house. You know what I tell them? I said, don't freedom sound good. <laughs> I said, Here, yeah. I said, yeah, freedom sounds good. I said, here's what you gotta think. Every one of those helicopters that went over your house had 16 young Americans in there. They said, you can roll back over and go to sleep. Go to bed. Nothing's gonna happen on my watch. I'm gonna do my job to make sure you get up in the morning. And I'm putting my life on the line, like my brothers and sisters, to make sure you get the opportunity to get up in the morning. I have a good friend of mine, uh, Bob Nichols. Uh, he's a Vietnam veteran. Bob Nichols has served in every infantry, or still, he's still alive as it has, uh, served in every infantry regiment in Fort Campbell. 327 50 Deuce, 187. Vietnam veteran. Uh, in Vietnam, Bob was with uh, the 187 of the 101st. He was on a hill called Dong Ngoc Bea. For those of you who don't know, if you've seen the movie, it's the same thing as Hamburger Hill. You know, Bob was on Hamburger Hill with the 101st in Vietnam. And he wrote a, a little poem uh, that I think is, it's, it's, it's entitled The Vietnam Veteran, but it's, it's really, you could, you could put any kind, of, any kind of name you want to in front of the word veteran, and it would apply. But it goes kind of like this. We were a brotherhood of men and women that stood alone with something that no one can give and no one can take away. Courage was contagious. We stood and we fought for each other when our country forgot how. The sacrifices we made must not be forgotten lest we forget our friends who we carried from the field or left behind. They are and will forever be young in the minds of all of us. Anybody who's been in the Army for a while, you understand what that means. We live by, we live by code, we live by honor, we live by, we live by things that mean things to us that may not mean things to, they may just be words to someone else. I hearken back to the fact that in 1973, when I joined the Army, and it's not a, don't please don't take this as a sexist remark because it's not meant to be, but back then, you know, it wasn't that long ago, but 73 was, was a little bit different. We lived in a little different world than we live in now. And the code of conduct that I, that I took that I memorized, that I, that I took into my heart. The very first line of that code of conduct says, I'm an American fighting man. I serve the forces which guard my country and its way of life. I am prepared to give my life in its defense. And I've lived that my whole life. And I'm still ready. Don't let the fact that all these gentlemen here that are retired, or a little bit older, if you think they won't rock up and do it again, you're our sadly mistaken. It means that much to us. I want to thank you for the honor of being your guest speaker today. Uh, it's something I've had on my bucket list for a while. Uh, I, I really enjoy being here with you. Uh, but there, I want to leave you with one other thing before I go, and this is the last thing. Before you leave, before you walk out of here today, I want you to take a look around. Remember the brave men and women who lie in honor in this place. They lie in honor of rest as to how our country was meant to be. But we are not judged by our color, by our gender, by our religion, or by our status. Just a simple headstone, not one greater than the other. Thank you for your day.